I'm at Black Magic with Simon. And again, Black Magic have always you know, always do something interesting, and their camera stuff is very interesting. I'll get to that, but we need to talk about some other interesting aspects. And one of the products I really like because it it really shows you uh, a, like a, a ship moving in the night is uh, their new, new I/O product, um, the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme. Now, like Simon, this this is a, a very interesting product, not just because um, it, it basically does it, you know up to the highest resolutions with the most bit depth available on any you know, IO device on the market? Mm -hmm, sure. Um, it moves away from uh, Thunderbolt 2 because there is limitation in Thunderbolt 2 that they need to go past to get to those extreme <laughs> rates. We've now got PCIe. Yeah, that's right. And I'm quite bullish about that issue because you know Mac's all nice, etc. But <laughs> Macintosh people, Mac is a consumer company and they really focus on the consumer and not so much on the pro. We do have the Pro Mac, but it it's already getting old. I can buy, you know, very fast PCs for Linux or for Windows and the PCIe interface, I can now take advantage of those like mini supercomputers with you can get things with 36 cores, 72 threads and <laughs> an amazing amount of memory that just the Mac people can't go close. And it's that for, sort of foresight which is really good. It always comes out of Black Magic, so I really like that market. But the other thing about the IO product, uh, and I'll, I'll get to you, Simon. I just like to talk <laughs> a lot. Um, is the partnership with Avid? Yep. Right. Now, just just quickly tell tell us uh, how that partnership works, and is there any difference between the two products? Sure. Yeah, happy to do that, James. Yeah, if, I mean, first and foremost, we're thrilled by yeah. by, by by that as an opportunity, uh, and obviously, um, Avid is showing that product on their booth here at, at NAB this week. Um, I mean, principally, this is the, the new Avid Artist uh, DNX IO. Uh, is a new product for Avid and specifically for them. So you ask the question as to as to are there variations between um, our hardware and, and their hardware? Well, the hardware is very similar, um, but but principally in the case of the uh, the Avid Artist um, device, that's been specifically tailored for their needs. So as, as as really a perfect companion product to Media Composer and other products within within their suite. So I think that being able to work with them. And, and, and respond to their exact set of requirements. Um, for instance, one of the things that the, that the hardware is capable of doing is that it's got built-in encoding, hardware encoding, actually within the device. So in the case of the, um, uh, of, of the product, it can actually encode to DNX within the box. Now this um, is important, guys, because you know encoding takes CPU power, so it's freeing up a lot of power yeah. to the editor. So this is this is why this is an important issue. So keep going, but I just want to make sure you understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, absolutely, and, and you know, and that becomes more of an issue the higher the bandwidth. That's exactly right. And, you when know, we're doing the throughput we require for these new high frame rate 4K. Yeah. It, it becomes a big issue. And fits very much with your opening statements with, with, with why we've put PCIe on this because PCIe was always prevalent on our breakout boxes in the past. We Years ago we had products like the Multibridge. That's right, uh, I, I, I've you know, got one. So. <laughs> line of products. And actually, you know, this is kind of going back to PCIe, but yeah, going right. back to PCIe, you know, with a specific purpose. And that's I think right. that, you know, I think it's important that, that it has the, um, the, the, the bandwidth on both platforms, depending on which side of the church you sit That's on, right. whether you're Mac or your Windows, or whatever, yeah. um, you know, it's important that you can get the necessary bandwidth in and out of, of, of your machine um, to make this as powerful a tool as it needs to be. So, so having the hardware encoding within the box exactly as you say frees up a lot of processing capability and, and then it means actually the data transfer is a lot less because the compression's already been taken care of at the ingest stage um, and I think you know it, it, it's a great product um, and I think that as that develops and I think it's going to ship around Q3 
uh, the new Avid products, and, and we'll ship by them. This is their product, uh, made for us, you know, in, in, in partnership with them, and specific to a, a whole set of requirements that, 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 that they will deliver upon us. So rather than it being a Black Magic Design product, it very specifically is is going to be an Avid, uh, is going to be an Avid product. Um, but of course, you know, we we'll back them all the way in terms of providing that technology uh, in in that box to give them everything they need to do with it. Yes, but let's go over the ramifications of this a little bit. Like, Avid, we'll, ha we'll have to be honest, Avid's been a little bit, like, lost of late, in my opinion. Um, when they got rid of the DS product line, for example, it really left a big hole in their range of, for finishing for, like, if you wanted to finish for film and have the full, um, you know, being able to use your compositing and everything in the finishing suite, Avid really didn't really have a good, good story anymore. And I think it's really good and a very big approval of Black Magic because obviously um, with this with the implement this card using with their software, one would also say that the 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 merit you know the, the partnership where this is where Resolve starts to come in as well. Sure. So if they approve your I/O, you know it's a it's a company approval, and so and to me it's a little bit of a, a, a pat on the back for going to Resolve as your finishing tool as well. So. That's, see, that's why I think it's a, more important than just this. And that's why I think it's a big feather in Black Magic's hat this year. Out of all the things you've done, like there's a lot of mm. other things we'll do videos on, but uh, that's probably one of the biggest notes of what has happened this year with Black Magic. Sure, sure. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it, it, from our point of view, it's a relationship that extends back to, to, to really um, opening up support um, within our debt link range of products within the cards, the PCIe boards, um, for people using Media Composer. And we've been doing that now for, for a number of years and dating back even more than that, you know, um, really great relationship when it comes to Pro Tools and the and, and, and those finishing tools. I mean, you know, Pro Tools is, 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 is clearly market leading. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that relationship has, has certainly developed and I think you know it's a great thing for the customer. Ultimately what matters most in, in any of these arrangements and any of these agreements is that the customer gets products and tools that they can work with. And you know, historically uh, we had this conversation off video when we were talking before. You know, all of my education in, in nonlinear editing was was using Avid and using film composer and media composer. Um, and, and still today that remains you know one of the most powerful and tools in this market so I think you know we are absolutely thrilled and delighted that, that that we're able to provide them with a box that they can then use with their customers that will deliver them all of the IO performance that that they're looking for to, to move that forward with so you know I think you look at round tripping with resolve that's in place you look at DNX HD in our new video assist product we've got DNX HD in our cameras we've got DNX HD in our hyper debt range of products so you know I think that I think that the um, you know that relationship is multi-layered and it may just extend to being a codec within a product or in this instance it's a whole box um, but you know we're delighted to provide them uh, with a product that, that, that hopefully as I say will, will empower the customers to do exactly what you know what they need to do and, and also marry with with the company's vision as to how they want to take that forward. Um, let's just quickly jump into one other issue or something I heard uh, and that's um, HEVC Support. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that official? Is that this is capable of doing some sort of HEVC conversion as well, or is that another product? I'm yeah, no, confused. certainly a, a part of the development of 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 the products that we're talking about, the hardware that we're talking about, and that built-in um, uh, encoding within the box is the ability to encode to H.265. Because I think you know um, we, we we're pretty much reaching the point whereby. You know, we can say now that's going to be the standard for the streaming of, of, of Ultra HD content um, over the internet. Uh, H.265 is the, the, the codec of choice for that delivery. And therefore, again, likewise, by being able to do that within the box, this is more on play out probably yeah, than that's right. the, you I'm, know, I'm not, this is I'm, delivery now, not right. ingest. I'm not exactly sure. See, that's a, that story is a little bit un, like, like there's probably other chapters to go through yes, on that yeah. story. But the fact that you can do it, does show that there's more chapters to be read. Sure. And and we'll probably figure that later on, uh, because traditionally it's an IO box for editors, etc. Um, I'm not exactly sure how being able to produce H265 
H265 works in with that, but I know there is needs, and to a degree, it sort of puts the box into other markets, which mm. are which is traditionally not where it goes, mm. and you know we'll see how, where that leads us. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I think that'll do for now. We've got a lot of talking on this product, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, this is um, Simon from Black Magic, uh, and at NAB uh, 2015. Bye for now. Yeah.